Hello everybody and welcome to Scandinavia, the hobby room and another TT, a tabletop talk or a Tamiya Thursday talk. So today we're gonna talk a lot about the WT01 again and especially the Blackfoot 3. Now this is gonna be my second episode of me trying to get through all my Tamiya cars one by one and just have a little cozy tabletop talk. So since we started with the WT01 in the first episode, I thought it would be logical to continue with another WT01. As mentioned, this is the Blackfoot 3. It's an XB model again, which is Tamiya's destination for a ready-to-run. XB stands for expert built or factory assembled. And this is the model number 57825. And the kit version is model number 58498. So essentially this is a factory assembled 58498 Blackfoot 3. It's based on the WT01, which is Tamiya's two-wheel drive version of the original 1999 WR01, which was launched with the Wild Dagger. Funny enough, this is a Blackfoot 3 and the WT01 was actually launched in 2003 with the Blackfoot Extreme. Now the most interesting fact about this particularly WT01 is of course the body. This is the original Super Blackfoot mold which is essentially the same Ford monster truck that came with the original Blackfoot in the 1980s and the Super Blackfoot later. So this is version number 3 with the WT01 chassis underneath. There's also a King Blackfoot and the Blackfoot Extreme, which I mentioned, but these do not have the same hard body plastic. So this is a Blackfoot 3 with a Blackfoot Extreme uh, chassis and a Blackfoot and Super Blackfoot body. Again, in WT01 context, this is the first of three available classic body mods trucks which was released by Tamiya with the WT01 chassis. We got the Blackfoot 3, we got the Mud Blaster 2 and the Bush Devil 2. And this was the first one from 2011 and the XB version followed here in 2012. Since the chassis under, underneath is basically a very standard and classic WT01 chassis. The most interesting part with this one for me anyway is the hard body here. So this is an XB version and sadly enough this hard body version is not painted so we got the bare black plastic here applied with the Blackfoot 3 stickers. If you were to get the kit version you could of course make a bit different uh, body with the paint that really makes a difference on the surface and it will blend more nicely with the stickers here. We've got a painted driver, not many details but for running purposes he does the job and yeah it's a fine looking super Blackfoot body. As you can see, the holes from the other cars and molds are still there. That's not especially, that's not particularly a good thing about this, but yeah, a original Blackfoot body that you could use with the Blackfoot and the super Blackfoot. Yeah, but you could also get some new decals for it and paint it up your own way and make it look exactly like 
you want it. Underneath we got a WT01 chassis and since the last episode was about a WT01 I'm just gonna refer to the link up here if you want to go through some of the details with this chassis. But let's keep it very short here. It's a monocoque based system. It got two identical symmetrical rails here. It got a double wishbone suspension and it got the famous short travel uh, pogo sticks here, 65 millimeter in the front and rear. It's a rear wheel drive, two wheel drive. So we've got the gearbox here and a single motor here and the drive line in metal here, but everything else is plastic, including the gears. For the review bias guide, I can definitely say the same about this WT01 than I did with the last WT01. It's an entry level setup. You get plastic bushings, you get pogo sticks, you get a silver can motor, and you get a very basic yeah, double wishbone suspension, rear wheel drive, two wheel drive system here. So it's definitely target at the beginners or the entry level hobbyists. The kit versions actually come with a pre-assembled gearbox. So again, a proof that this one is targeted at the yeah, beginners. So it's a basic quick build with a two wheel drive and a simple gearbox. And I think it's definitely perfect for any beginner. But I must say maybe it's more perfect for the beginner to 20 years ago because this is getting an old chassis and it's getting discontinued by Tamiya. So compared to modern releases from yeah other brands, you will definitely not get a very good setup. But if you are a Tamiya fan, enthusiast like me, I think you will get pretty excited about this weird monocoque based type chassis which you can convert as you want even to a four-wheel drive dual motor setup and a four-wheel steering and the possibilities are just endless for this one durability wise it's very durable but that maybe has to do with the gear ratio it's set up to an 1 to 18 gear ratio so you will not get a lot of top speeds a lot of torque and acceleration but with this basic setup you will definitely have a very durable durable monster truck and it kind of corrects all the mistakes from the 1980s set up with the ORV chassis and such and here you'll get a fully double wishbone suspension but still a very classic entry level monster truck from Tamiya. Again, one of the disadvantages of this old chassis is the rounded battery compartment here. So it takes maybe a 4000, definitely a 3600 milliamps per hour NICAD or NIM battery, nickel metal hydride. But if you want to fit a larger square LiPo battery or something else, you might run into some difficulties and have to modify another battery tray. As mentioned, this is an XB model, a ready to run model. So it came with the stand up 2012 Tamiya uh, ready to run setup, which is the TEU 105 BK with the BEC 60A ESC, the TRU 08 2.4 gigahertz. And then of course the Tamiya silver can motor, which also comes in the kits. It's a 27 turn brushed motor and the TSU 03 analog standard three kilogram servo. So a basic enjoyable setup would together coupled with the low gear ratio. It won't get you up in speed, but you can definitely have a lot of fun with these. Again, for the upgrades and modifications, I think I will refer to the 
old or last episode up here with a link but in general there has been and are still available a lot of different hop up options and upgrades for this one but the essential ones are still the same you might want to need 16 11 50 sized ball bearings one type but 16 in total you need eight for the gearbox and eight for the wheel axles and then there is the problem with the servo now you can see this is a standard so this got the soft servo mounts made of plastic here and it will shake itself loose over time so you might want to get into a alloy uh, hub up for that and then there is the pinion options now i think i mentioned it was a 0.8 modular system it's actually at 0.6 so we got the 18 tooth standard and the 20 tooth so there's an option for two additional tooth but you need an 0.6 steel pinion perhaps instead of the alloy stock ones my particular unit it's absolutely standard that is absolutely nothing changed with this one because my son got one and we upgraded that and i got another one of these wt ones and i upgraded that and i also got a wr01 that i heavily modified with extended shock towers and everything but my unit is a result of a temptation in yeah two three four four five years ago i can't remember when a Danish local company offered this one up for sale, the Blackfoot 3. And the price I think was around, yeah, $150 or something. And that was a bit too tempting, tempting for a WT01 fan like me. I do very much like this body, even with the XB non paint, I might buy some decals someday and get it painted who knows i might do some ball bearings upgrade and motor upgrades or shock upgrades but right now i'm perfectly happy with having a one standard wt01 and then a couple of other ones that i enjoy modifying for some extra speed and some extra fun that was the WT01 Blackfoot 3 XB model and I am sure there's going to be a lot of other installments of this series for those interested in a lot of waffling. Please uh, share some comments about your experience with Tamiya or the WT01 or the Blackfoot line or in general give some feedback to me about this video maybe they are still too long or too short or too boring any feedback or constructive criti criticism will be welcomed i think that's it for now i will see you in another ttt tabletop talk or another video on my channel with a lot less waffling take care everybody happy holidays and keep them running.